Well, carbon capture and storage is back in the news again. There's a big fight going on between the federal government and the Alberta government, mostly instigated by Premier Danielle Smith and her environment minister, Sonia Savage, about who will pay for the very, very large bill to decarbonize Alberta oil and gas. I'm going to be talking to Gil McGowan, who's the president of the Alberta Federation of Labor, which has been doing some work in this area. So welcome to the interview, Gil. Thanks, Mark. It's good to be here. Well, Gil, now look, I understand that you've been in conversations with the federal government. Uh, you've kind of given the AFL's position on this. Can you tell us about um, those conversations? Well, first, I'd like to begin by saying two things. First, um, in response to some comments that were made uh, by both Premier Smith and more recently by Environment Minister Sonia Savage, uh, they they came out of the Christmas break um, with a burr in their saddle uh, about the issue of just transition and the uh, you know the positions that the federal government has been taking, and um, you know they they made the argument that the federal government is proceeding with so called just transition legislation without consulting Alberta. But as an Albertan uh, and as uh, someone who represents literally hundreds of thousands of working Albertans, including people who work in the oil and gas sector, uh, I can say that that's unequivocally false. Uh, in fact, the federal government has been consulting Albertans broadly uh, for the last year and a half um, on issues related to the unfolding global energy transition. And uh, those consultations have included groups like ours, the Alberta Federation of Labor, which is an umbrella organization for Alberta unions representing about 170,000 working Albertans. In, and once again, once, including people working in oil and gas. And uh, so we've been consulted. And I, and, and I know for a fact that uh, the uh, business community has also been consulted. So groups like the Business Council of Alberta, the Calgary Chamber of Commerce, uh, and even the oil industry itself, uh, they've been in there, uh, you know, uh, making their pitch uh, about, uh, you know, the global energy uh, transition and things like CCUS. Um, and so for, you know, I, frankly, I was kind of appalled when I heard them say that they weren't being consulted because it's, you know, there's a big difference between um, not being consulted and refusing to be uh, involved in the consultations. And I think that's what's happened here. So that's the first thing. But uh, to directly to your point, uh, yes, we, we have been talking to the federal government about our ideas uh, about CCUS. And, um, and, and in fact, we put together what we call an, an economic blueprint for Alberta from a work, uh, Alberta workers perspective that we delivered to them in the fall. And we've subsequently uh, delivered another report that looks specifically at CCUS with our recommendations. So, um, you know, for, for the premier to say that Albertans are not being heard, uh, like I say, there's a big difference between, <laughs> um, you know, you know say, saying, you know, that they haven't been consulted and refusing to in, engage in those consultations, which I think is, being, is, is happening right now. Well, uh, the current controversy is has, was kicked off yesterday with comments uh, in a Reuters story that quoted uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. And I want to I'll just quote what he said. Uh, We've seen for a while Alberta hesitating around investing in anything related to climate change. But CCUS is one of those tangible things. And then he went on to say that basically provinces like Alberta that have are running a budget surplus and uh, in the, this fiscal year, uh, Alberta's is estimated to be around $13 billion. And he said they can pay some of the bill. Uh, and that hardly seems, I mean, seems perfectly fair to me and and shouldn't be controversial. But Premier Smith and, and Sonia Savage are up in arms over it. Yeah, actually, I, I, Mark, I have to admit that my dominant emotion when hearing these comments coming from uh, Premier Smith and ministers like Sonia Savage is frustration, uh, because we've been trying to engage in in you know in conversations with all levels of government, uh, from the federal government to the provincial government and even municipal governments. We've been trying to engage with them in conversations about what we should be doing as a province 
to A, acknowledge the unfolding global energy transition, which has huge implications for oil producing jurisdictions like Alberta and, the, and, and all the people who work in industries like oil and gas. You know, like I think most Albertans understand that it's coming, it's happening, whether we like it or not, we either can be prepared uh, or, or be left behind, frankly. And, and so, um, you know, like, and, and so, and part of that conversation has to be about carbon capture and sequestration. And, uh, you know, we, that's been our position for, for literally years now. Um, you know, we need to, you know, if our oil industry is to, uh, is to continue, if we hope for it to thrive into the future, we have to recognize that we have to reduce our emissions. And, uh, you know, one of the best ways to do that is by, it, you know, expanding the use of carbon capture and sequestration. So the question is not, should we doing, should we do, be doing more CCUS in Alberta? It's, it's how, uh, when, and who pays for it. So frankly, I, I think, you know, as someone representing people who work in oil and gas, I've actually been encouraged by the willingness of the federal government to engage in conversations about the energy transition, what it means for for the economy in Alberta, what it means for workers in Alberta. And I've also been encouraged that they're willing to put money on the table to support things like CCUS. I, you know, but I, and I don't think it's unreasonable for the, the prime minister to say, if you know, if the federal government is going to support these projects, if they're going to put money on the table for these projects, I don't think it's un, 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 unreasonable at all for, for, the, for the prime minister or the federal government to say, um, you know, to the to the provincial government, show us the money too, especially uh, when they're so flush with cash. I would actually go further and say uh, that uh, it's appropriate not only to ask the provincial government to say show us the money. It's also appropriate to tell the to say the same thing to the industry because you know at the same time that uh, the Alberta provincial government is recording these huge budget surpluses and not just for one year. It looks like this is going to be the case for many years going forward because most of our big oil sands companies have reached what they call post payout, which means that they're they're they've now kicked up to paying much higher royalties and and that's going to you know, impact the bottom line of all the Alberta government for years going forward. So it's not just one surplus, it's probably many. But at the same time, we've got uh, all the big uh, oil sands companies who are recording record profits because of uh, consistently high oil prices right now. And so, uh, so yeah, I think, you know, as an Albertan, as someone who represents workers, including people who work in oil and gas, I think we should be talking about CCUS and we should be talking about putting serious money on the table. That money should be coming uh, from the federal government, but I think it's fair to say it should also be coming from the provincial government and from industry itself. Well, let's talk about the numbers because the Oil Sands Pathways Alliance, which accounts for the companies, there's six companies in, in that alliance and they represent 95% of oil sands uh, uh, production. And they've said that decarbonizing the oil sands sector will cost $75 billion by 2050. And they're looking to governments to spend, to pay for $50 billion of that. So that's, that's 80% of Alberta's oil production, 60% of Canada's oil production, but it leaves 40% of Canadian oil production. Still, who's going to pay for CCUS or some other decarbonization there. And the Alberta government has thus far committed only $300 million to CCUS. So you can see that's the context in which this conversation is, is, play, is playing out. But I also, I also have to say that there, to the best of my knowledge, there has been no economic modeling of whether or not these oil companies will actually be competitive. Will they be in business by when 2050 comes along? It's never been done. The Americans do lots of this kind of modeling. Canada has done none of it. So essentially, the industry uh, is be, is asking the government to put in tens of billions of dollars to support it. And we don't even know if those companies are going to be around in 10, 15, 20, 30, 30 years. That strikes me as a, a real weakness here in the big ask from both the Alberta government and from the industry uh, asking the federal government for that much money. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Markham. Um, you know, as... The Federation of Labor President, um, I don't just represent working people in this province. My position affords me an opportunity to sit, often sit at tables with business decision makers, uh, including the, some of the big decision makers in the oil and gas industry. And I can tell you based on uh, my interactions with 
them and my experiment experience in the industry, uh, including the stint that I did as the co-chair of the uh, Energy Diversification Advisory Committee that made recommendations about energy diversification and petrochemicals. Um, I can tell you based on that experience, the investors and big companies don't make decisions about uh, um, uh, investment, especially on this kind of scale, without modeling. So uh, it's clear to me that they've done modeling, uh, and that's perhaps why they're asking for the government to spend so much of the money as opposed to spending it themselves. <laughs> um, and I, I think it's completely reasonable to say if we're going to be putting public money on the table, especially at that scale, that uh, the public deserves to see some modeling about, uh, you know, that this is actually good investment and it won't be stranded assets. Um, but, you know, I, I, I want to say a couple of things about the proposal from the Pathways Alliance, um, because as you said, uh, that's you know that that's the, the big ask on the table right now uh, and i think i don't think a lot of albertans really know what's being proposed here and so what it is is that the pathways alliance as you said is a is a coalition of the six biggest oil and gas the oil sands companies in the province representing about 90 percent of our production so they're they're the big guys the suncor sonovis imperial etc and um, they have a blueprint for uh, carbon capture and sequestration. And as you said, uh, their plan would, you know, which would roll out in three phases over the next 20 years or so, uh, has a price tag of about $75 billion. And, and they are asking uh, the public sector, the public uh, through their governments uh, to pay 50, mil 50 billion of that 75 billion. And so the lion's share would be paid for by the public uh, to help these companies decarbonize. Um, and so I'll say a couple of things. First, their request for 50 billion uh, of the 75 billion uh, to pay for the, this huge project was made before uh, the price of oil strut up, uh, shot up into the stratosphere and, and before uh, they started recording record profits. And I, I, I find it curious <laughs> that uh, the fact that their financial situation has changed dramatically has not changed their ask to government, I think it's reasonable to, as you know, as you know, as a citizen, uh, you know, to say that you know now that you have so much more money in your bank account, perhaps you can pay more of the share of, of what you're proposing. Uh, the, the second thing I'd say about the Pathway Alliance proposal, which I think uh, raises some red flags, is that it is designed exclusively to address the, the needs of, of, of those oil sands companies. So it would be this network of, uh, you know, of, of emission collection pipelines going to 22 projects in Northern Alberta with a hub in Cold Lake. And um, it's all about helping them reduce their environmental footprint, which is great. But from our perspective in the labor movement, um, if we're gonna spend this money to build this huge network of uh, you know, CO2 collection, um, it could also support other industries who have who want to reduce their emissions, and and actually, the, and as you've reported, Markham, there's a whole bunch of emerging industries who actually use CO2 as feedstock. So if we're using public money to create this network of pipelines, why are we doing it just to cater to the narrow interests of a handful of companies when we could actually create a network that supports other companies to reduce their emissions? And uh, and also creates feedstock for emerging industry. So you know that's so like I actually think you know we should be having a conversation about CCUS in Alberta. We desperately need to have one, but it's not. It shouldn't be the Pathways Alliance proposal or nothing. Um, and and I certainly am very disappointed that the the UCP in particular has chosen to politicize this issue, as as opposed to you know asking everyone to come to the table. Uh, you know, the federal government, the provincial government, municipalities, industry, business. And let's talk about building a real CC, CCUS network that won't just support the narrow interests of a couple of companies, but it could actually be used as a foundation uh, to support economic diversification. There's an opportunity here, and I think it, it's being lost in, uh, you know, all this finger pointing and politicization. Yeah, let's provide a little context for viewers. So the uh, Pathways Alliance project would basically build a big uh, carbon uh, CO2 pipeline from the northernmost uh, oil sands project down to 
uh, Cold Lake, and there would be a, a, a sequestration hub there where the the CO two would be buried. So that's in the in the northeast corner of of Alberta, and then there would be these feeder pipelines that would go into the various projects, and which and the projects themselves would bolt on equipment that would capture the CO two. It has and 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 you know the alliance makes the point that that other industries that that want to uh, tie into that pipeline could do so, but there's hardly any industry out there. Yeah. I mean, it's it's really, this is about the oil sands yeah. decarbonization. I, I mean, yeah, I, I, and I, I mentioned uh, a couple of minutes ago that a few years ago under the previous government, I had the great privilege of being appointed as the co-chair of something called the Energy Diversification Advisory Committee. And it was that committee uh, meeting with industry, meeting with labor, with municipalities, and, and especially with the industry in what we call the, the Heartland area, just Northeast of Edmonton, uh, we came up with a whole bunch of recommendations about how to uh, build out uh, and diversify industries related to oil and gas in, in what they call the downstream. So this is the value added portion of the oil and gas industry uh, that includes things like plastics, manufacturing um, and petrochemicals, things like that. And, you know, a lot of, I'm not sure how a lot of Albertans understand, but we actually have one of the biggest uh, downstream oil and gas petrochemical hubs in not just in Canada, but in all North America, right in the Edmonton, uh, the greater Edmonton area. So centered around Fort Saskatchewan. And so it's, it, you know, an economist talk about building clusters. Well, we already have a cluster. We have a we have a cluster. Uh, of petrochemical com chemical companies, plastic companies, uh, and a whole bunch of uh, companies that are dealing with emerging technologies that could create all sorts of economic activity, create all sorts of jobs, and 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 who would benefit uh, from having a carbon hub uh, as part of their cluster. And so, you know, when I heard that the Pathways Alliance was proposing to center the you know their carbon capture hub in, in 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 Fort Saskatchewan. You know, based on my experience and based on my knowledge of what's happening in uh, in the Heartland area, I mean, the obvious question to me is why not the Heartland? Why 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 on earth are are, are we going to spend billions of dollars to center uh, a CCUS hub in a place that's so far away from uh, the cluster, uh, the economic cluster that's already developed and that would benefit most? uh from this. so i mean like and that and, and that goes back to my previous point mark i i mean yes we should be talking about ccus but um there needs to be more discussion about uh the way we do it and whether or not the model proposed by the part of the uh, pathways alliance should be seen as the only one and that's what i'm afraid of i'm afraid of that the the subtext uh from you know, from the the UCP is that it's the Pathways Alliance model or nothing, and uh, and and that that fear was reinforced for me just recently because at the same time that uh, Premier Smith and Environment Minister Sonny Savage were you know launching their darts uh, at the federal government just after Christmas, uh, they you know they, they you know trying to politicize this issue, they were also approving. Uh, giving approval to uh, the, the projects related to the Pathway Alliance proposal. So that's what I'm afraid of. I, 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 yes, we need CCUS. Yes, we need a network. Yes, we need a, you know, pipelines to gather the stuff. We need a hub. Uh, but I, I think we're boxing ourselves in if we're just saying that the Pathway Alliance uh, proposal is, is the only one. I would actually go so far as to say that if we're going to build um, – uh, you know, uh, uh, an emission gathering uh, network, um, then we should think about it serving a much broader range of in industry. And and because it, in my view, we, we have this opportunity to build something that actually serves not just the oil sands companies, but other emitters and other companies that might want to use uh, CO2 as a feedstock, we should actually consider uh, creating a network, uh, a CCUS network that's run more like a public utility, uh, as opposed to something that is uh, property of just a handful of oil sands companies. That that that's, um, you know, that 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 that's part of the conversation that we in the Alberta Labor Movement are having with the federal government. Um, I'm just saying, like like let's not close off opportunities at the and options at this at this moment.
Right. And I think that's a fair argument, Gil, because if public money is going to be involved in CCUS and particularly the scale of this, I, I can't remember another project uh, where, you know, for a, to support a private industry, uh, governments were being asked to pony up $50 billion. And that's just for the oil sands. Who knows how many tens of billions it'll be for the rest of it. So we're talking enormous amounts of money here. Uh, capital is scarce as we go into energy transition planning. And so we have to make the best use of this money that we can. And the public interest is to leverage that that capital to do many other things uh, and diversify the Alberta economy. And uh, viewers who are interested can go to our YouTube channel and they can see my interview with the Calgary, uh, sorry, with the Alberta Carbon Conversion Technology Center back in the, a couple of months ago, where there are companies uh, in at that center that are already uh, that are already working, working on turning uh, CO, captured CO2 into cement, into vodka, into cloth, into soap, into all kinds of other projects. And this is done extensively already in China. And we have this opportunity. And if we don't speak up now, the opportunity will be lost. Once that capital gets spent in that project, if the Pathways Alliance project goes ahead with public money, there's then it's done. And the the opportunity is is pretty much lost. So uh, it's act now, have the bigger conversation, which ought to, by the way, be led by uh, Danielle Smith and Sonia Savage, uh, as opposed to uh, simply championing the the industry's uh, self interest. So anyway, uh, Gil, thank you very much for this. Really appreciate it. Yeah, it's my pleasure, and uh, thanks for all the work that you do, Markham. Take care. <laughs>